What's good, everybody? It's your boy Larry B, LB, whatever you want to call me. Back again. I know it's been a while. So happy, man, because my beard is coming back. I trimmed it, and I wish I hadn't have done it, man, because I felt so naked and incomplete without it. But it's coming back pretty fast. So anyway, I'm not going to hold this up any longer. I'm going to get right into the review. So what I'm going to talk about today is the first album from Suicidal Tendencies, which was self, which is self-titled, is Suicidal Tendencies, released in 1983 on Frontier Records. Uh, all you hardcore punk fans out there, man, you guys pretty much are familiar with Suicidal Tendencies, man. Uh, hardcore punk band, crossover thrash band, started by Mike Muir in 1981 in Venice, California. Uh, band is the band is iconic. You know what I'm saying? They were they're credited as one of the first bands of well, actually they're credited with creating crossover thrash or punk metal. Um, I know one review that I read said that um they pretty much were the first band to do that. And that, you know, it was after they released this album that you know, Metallica dropped Kill 'Em All, and I guess other thrash metal bands picked up on what these guys were doing. So they pretty much created that. Um, this album, however, it's more along the lines of hardcore punk. The band was still in their punk roots at this time. Um, it wasn't until their next release, um, which was um, Join the Army in 1987, where they really started like getting into the more crossover thrash that's when um rocky george had joined the band and he was influenced by thrash so his style his guitar style is really what like progressed him into that direction yeah but like i said this album was more in their punk their hardcore punk roots um this album had uh far as i know this album had one single which was institutionalized um and that song was a huge hit and because of that this album became a huge success and it gave the band the success they needed you know what i'm saying it became you know the band became successful because of that song you know the song got heavy airplay on uh mtv um back in the early 80s you know what i'm saying it's, it's a pretty cool video man I, I i recommend that you check the video out you can you can find it on youtube easily just type in you know um, suicidal tendency and that's probably one of the first videos that'll pop up but um, Mike Muir he was only 20 years old when this album dropped and um, I guess what I get from this album is kind of pretty much well not kind of but pretty much like teenage rebellion like I feel with this album he's really speaking to like the young teenagers you know what I'm saying because um, most of the most of the stuff he talks about are like it seemed like issues that, you know, that young rebellious teenagers would, would deal with. Or this would be a record that uh, that they would listen to to, like, vent their frustration. You know, they'd be like, wow, there's somebody that's feeling the same way that I feel and they're making a record. You know what I'm saying? Institutionalized is probably a great example. Um, what's so interesting about that song is that Mike, he didn't sing that song or deliver it. Well, he didn't sing that. He, really, he didn't sing the song. But he didn't, the lyrics, the verses were delivered in more of a spoken word delivery. He was conversational. Like, he, he's talking about how, like, you know, his parents are, like, bothering him. You know, he's just, you know, nothing's, he's saying nothing's wrong with him. But because I guess he's not acting the way his parents want him to act, they're trying to convince him because they've convinced themselves that he's on drugs and there's something wrong with him. Like, one of the, one of the most iconic lines from that song is a part where he says, all I wanted was a Pepsi. Like, his mom was saying, like, you're on drugs and this and that. And all he was saying was that he just wants a Pepsi. And so that's a very iconic line from that song. But um, the album is great. Um, I like, uh, I guess the song that really got me into this band actually wasn't institutionalized. It was actually um, the fourth track, Subliminal. Um that track is featured on Grand Theft Auto 5 on the radio station Channel X, which plays nothing but hardcore punk from a lot of the from most of the legendary bands of that era. Um, 
I just liked it that song because I guess what I liked it about it was that was the fact that Mike didn't actually sing the song. He like kind of yelled the lyrics. To me, to me, Mike Muir is like a rapper. To me, he rapped these songs. And see, I, I I'm a rap. I rap myself. Um, although I haven't really put nothing down in a good while. I mean, you can check my channel if you want to hear some of my freestyles. But that's what I like about. Um, suicidal tendencies in general like you know it was, it was more like he rapped the songs he shouted and rapped the songs that's what I enjoy about it and I also liked the content you know he was talking about how like television is selling all this propaganda all these illusions you know what I'm saying where they you know they're trying to you know trying to convince you that you know trying to convince you that this is the way you should live and you know whatever man that's what I got from the song but I just like the hook where he says, the fucking with me, subliminally. I just like that. I mean, and then I like how it goes into the, like, the real aggressive, hardcore punk, you know what I'm saying, chorus. Like, it, it's just great, man. I, I re That's what really what got me into this record, man. Um, but this is a classic album. I think any fan of hardcore punk or crossover thrash, thrash metal, whatever, any fan of rock music should have this in their collection, man, because it's definitely a great album. Um, I mean, it's great. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I don't, there's, there's not much I can say, man. I, it's just great material, man. I like, I enjoy listening to it. And um, I don't know if this record, I don't know if this is actually still in print. I, um, this is a used copy that I got from um, FYE. So I don't know if, if there are new copies that are still in print, because I don't know if you can, I don't know if you guys can tell here. I don't know if you guys can tell, but the CD cases, the CD is pretty old. This is a pretty old CD. I mean, I can tell, I can see that the vintageness or, or the ageness of it. You know, like the case is not even, the case is kind of gray looking. You know what I'm saying? But, but I, like I said, and here, here's a picture of the, this is like the band, this is not the, the current lineup, uh, Suicidal Tendencies has, they've went through numerous lineup changes. Um, this is the lineup at the time. But um, this is a great album. Also, like Suicidal, man, those guys, um, they were very, um, they were very controversial. They're very controversial, man. Uh, you know, there there's rumors that, uh, you know, like members of the band were involved in um, gang activity. You know what I'm saying? Cause uh, Mike Muir, you know he's the sit his signature blue bandana, and um, some say that they were associated, or affiliated with a gang called the the Venice White Boys. Also, uh, a uh, Amory Smith, his 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 flip hat right here has V13 written on it. Oh, uh, I think that was I think that was that's a gang out in Venice called Venice 13. But this actually was not his hat. It was um this guy right here, his brother. His brother was a member of the gang. And it was actually his brother's hat that he was wearing. That he was wearing. But um there was there was also there was also like a lot of violence at their at their shows. A lot of violence at their shows. And um and uh, also uh, there were gangs that actually formed from the band. Like there were gangs that formed cuz they were inspired by suicidal tendencies like um uh, I think I can't remember all their names. I just know they're called Suicide, the Suicidal Boys, or the Sueys, or whatever. It, it was it was a lot of gangs that formed, and the gangs have chapters in all over California, and there's even a chapter in like San Antonio, Texas. But gangs actually did form um, from the influence of this band. So I guess that shows how like music can really have an influence over somebody. But yeah, this is Suicidal Tendencies, their self-titled debut album, released in 1983. Um, I highly recommend it. Anybody that's a fan of punk, I mean, should have this in their collection, in my opinion. So, if you see this in a local record store somewhere for a good price, get it. I mean, you won't be disappointed. But um, anyway, this is LB with another album review. Hope you guys enjoyed what I've given you. I'm, hopefully, I've enlightened some of you to check out some new music. And until next time, love, peace, and happiness. Peace out.